Thank you very much. I must say I'm so excited to see so many people here today. I, I, uh, I've just got off an aeroplane from London uh, this morning. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you, at about five o'clock this morning, I was floating in the inky darkness like you do on a jet. And I was looking at that little map that they have that shows where the plane is. And as it came into Australia, I had tears in my eyes because it's been a quite an intensely personal time in London doing a whole lot of stories, but also I've been talking to people over there about the book. And there was the name Albany of, in WA just came up on the map. And I was thinking about the young men from 1914 because that's where they all left from as they were going off to war. It was the last place that they were in before they departed for... Uh, the First World War. And as I tell you the story, just think about the fact that of the thousands of young men that went over to the First World War, two thirds of them became casualties. So, the Lost Diggers. Um, it really is being hailed as one of the most important historical discoveries from the First World War. And I pinch myself that I'm the very privileged beneficiary of this wonderful. Um, exciting treasure hunt. These plates were quite literally in an attic in a French farmhouse for much of the last hundred years. And the story of how we found them is quite extraordinary. Um, there's a little town, if you look at the top of France there, you'll see just north of Paris there's a town called Amiens. And Amiens right up near the Somme Valley and there's a little town called Vignacourt which was allocated by the British in uh, May of 1915 as a rest village. And the Australians arrived in about May of 1916, and there was a couple that lived in this farmhouse called the Tilliers, Louis and Antoinette Tillier. Louis had gone away to war. He'd had a terrible war himself. He was a motorcycle dispatch rider, and um, he saw terrible things and was traumatised by that experience. But when he came back, he started making money because his farm was taken over by the British. Uh, and he started making money by selling photographs to Allied soldiers that were passing by. Um, Robert was a, a photographer in Vignacourt who's a, a descendant of the Tulliers. And he was like the local town photographer. And uh, he heard about these plates. And he only had a few of the plates. He got about Overall, he probably got 80 to 90 of the plates. But somebody passed him some of the plates from inside the family and said, have a look at these. And 25 years ago, this fellow, Laurent Marouz, came to Vignacourt because a friend of his had seen some of the prints of some of those few photo uh, plates in the Vignacourt town hall. And he, uh, he recognised them as being quite unique images. And with Robert Cronier's permission, he took a few copies of some of the images. There have never been pictures like this before. We don't know who these chaps are. They're two Australian boys. They're both military medal winners because you can, the photographs are so high quality, you can zoom in on the medal ribbons. Australia didn't have an official photographer until about 1917. And so there's not a lot of images of Australian soldiers on the Western Front that are of particularly high quality. And there was a bit of a bias with the images that were taken to the British forces, because most of them were British. These are guys that have just come in from the front line. When they were photographed, they were often having a photograph taken of them to send home to family or loved ones, or more often, we've discovered, more often to show their mates in the trenches. And Peter Burness has told me, the historian from the War Memorial, that a lot of soldiers, when they were shot, were found with bundles of photographs. What really strikes me about um, a lot of these lost digger images is it's been very personal. I've never cried so much in my life, to be honest, because you actually go and sit down with families. And you'd think after 100 years that people would have got over the memories. But um, so often, you find yourself tearing up over a table, and you're reading letters that this bloke wrote home. And you realize that for fathers and grandsons, um, it's just as powerful today as it was then.